I'm just gonna chime in here too. I playing Korea is really dark. Um, and for me, it, it ended up being the quality of sleep. So you may feel like you're sleeping all the time, but I know I was super guilty of laying in bed and binge watching Netflix. And that's not actual sleep. And also by the time you fall asleep, you're not getting the same quality of sleep. So I know we all know this, but as I got later into season and I was, you know, your body's tired, all these things, I, I caught myself like binge watching Netflix for two hours before I went to sleep and counting that because I was laying in bed. Um, so your quality of sleep can really make a big difference too. I do also have like some glasses. Um... It's like, looks like sunglasses and it has blue light. I don't know if anybody saw that before. And it's also like nice to have it in the morning, like for 30 minutes. And it's like blue light wakes you up normally, like your phone does <laughs> in the, in the, like, or your, or your computer in the evening. Um, there, yeah. There's, um, my boyfriend has these, these other glasses and they're actually like a yellowish orange and it you wear them 30 minutes before you go to bed and it kind of helps promote like, uh, what is it, melatonin? Is that what kind of yeah. like puts you to sleep? And it's so it kind of like gets that going in your body and you wear them for like 30 minutes while you're just kind of relaxing, ready to go to bed. And um, he like swears by those. He says they're really good as well. Yeah, you can change the glasses, at least for mine you can. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And then like, not so serious but when like the dark time starts we said also always like the um the way to come through this like dark days is like mkl which is like in the german letters for like people mention k for candles and l for um like lights in a string How do you also anna you could be overly stressed like you got to imagine yourself you're much more than four parts but let's say the emotion or the health foundation right is physical social uh emotional and um wait what did i miss mental physical social emotional okay there we go so let's say in those four areas you're going to get drained throughout a day throughout a week throughout a month throughout a season and sometimes that's going to drag you down too right? You have to try to find ways to unburden yourself. There's things, there's areas of your life that maybe you're carrying that stress with you. And so that energy level throughout the day may not be related to your water intake, your, you know, food intake, your, your sleep, these things. So just consider that factor too. What's, what's my stress like? How am I unraveling? How am I getting away from that stress? So not just how am I using my time to sleep or to eat or to hydrate, but how am I allowing myself to take in some positive energy, refuel this way, stuff like that. So hopefully that perspective also will help. Like what I think is that now there, there's a time where season is hardest. Like I think January, February, this is often like when you already like you did a lot of things and it feels like so long and then there's still so much to go. It's, it's just January or February. Um, and I want to say like, it's normal to have some kind of lack of motivation. Like everybody is feeling that sometimes probably during that time because it's also dark and you're a little bit more tired. Um, but like, if you know that, and if you reconnect to like, why did you start there? Like, why, why do you play volleyball? Why do you play in this team? What do you really want to, want to do there? And like, knowing that it's normal to, to feel like this during that time, but like knowing, remembering that I'm not a fan of like setting like huge goals, like one after another, because like in the end, like many goals or resolutions, like for new year's, are made from like what you think you should do or like what other people like would make other people happy and like made by your ego and your ego is like usually weak and pretty unstable. That's why I, I always suggest during that time, okay, really like having maybe some kind of like morning routine where you can reconnect to like your values, like why you started, what kind of person you wanna be during that days. Just for 
for you, Barry, I have a question. Just like, can you give an example of maybe a routine that you would do that would help that? Like an example of a routine? Mm -hmm. So because that's funny because just today I wrote down some lines that um, like I have a prayer in the morning that reminds me on what is important to me. And I wrote that down for myself. Um, so for sure you can find some online, but I think it's much more powerful if you really reconnect to like, okay, what's important to me? Um, and what do I want to be connected to? And what do I want to invite maybe? And if you think already in the morning about that, that's really powerful. Um, after like you're like thinking about what you really want to do, what's your focus for today, it's going to give you some insights about that. Um, then maybe some intuitive movements can be yoga, but just like feeling your body because your body is in the here and now always it's it's maybe kind of your portal to the here and now um so like like doing some yoga moves or yeah like feeling okay what do i need how do i feel today and then like starting to accept that and i guess this already is enough for the mental side yeah i want to say i hope that you know everything that happened this year if nothing else can be your motivation is to realize that we're play we get to play a game or you guys get to play a game. You know, um, we had a good slap in the face to realize what life is about this year. And um, I one thing I do think I wish when I was playing that I would have done and what I saw people that were successful. So the great thing about my career is I was able to be with some of the best players in the world. And I got to watch people come through the program and in different programs and different teams. And sometimes most, one of the most frustrating things was I wanted it so bad and I was willing to do absolutely everything and anything and volleyball consumed my life. And, you know, whatever our tips I heard, I was going to do it. If somebody told me to meditate, I was going to meditate. If somebody told me to eat apples all day, I'd eat apples because I want to be the best and I'm going to do whatever it takes to be the best, you know? And, um, what I saw was the best didn't do that. <laughs> the best really didn't. And it was one of the frust most frustrating things because it seemed like, I mean, they worked, you know, they, they put in their time, but they were not all consumed with the sport. They, they had lives and I was all in, you know? And I just, I want you guys to recognize if you can, I'm old, so I'm giving you some wisdom here. If you can, pull back and recognize you're playing a sport. This is your life. You're, you're giving your life. You only get one. And for this year, you're playing volleyball in whatever country you're in and you don't get that time back. So your time away from your family for Christmas, that's big time. That's your time. Enjoy it. Like, you know what I mean? You're playing volleyball, but make sure you're enjoying it. Your motivation is shucks. If I'm not going to get to be with my family for Christmas, I better doggone be loving what I do. Something about like if people try to tell you how you feel, um, because I think that's a pretty dangerous thing because this is what also like um, parents do sometimes and it's called gaslighting. So like, um, for example, like, like if somebody tries to tell you um, what you should feel, it's like, okay, he claps you in the face and then it's like, oh, you clapped me in the face. He's like, no, I didn't. And you're like, well, uh, well, I, I don't know, actually. Um, maybe, maybe he didn't. And then you, like, you get confused. So it's even more important to connect with yourself and like trust your body. Like, and you like, it's not so easy in the beginning because we didn't learn that from like childhood on, I feel. Um, I think what, what you just did, like validating that frustration is always the first step. And it's most important. You can't go over it. You can't just be like, oh, I'm not frustrated. I'm trying to pretend I'm always happy. Well, if this is not true, okay, it, it won't change anything. So acceptance is like the foundation of change at all. And like, it's a really basic coaching exercise and probably everybody's doing that. But I find it really helpful to zoom out and think like, okay, in one year, what do I want to say about like me doing right now? Like, okay, like that you're frustrated is not, it, that's fine. That's like part of life all the time. And also, I don't know, after a while, like working with that, I feel 
also there's some like big value in it i find it not what well, not nice but kind of nice that okay what can i learn from this situation because often like it's got, it's going to teach you something happy times are really nice and like everybody should really enjoy it because we we earn it every second of that but then like after like in in this like shitty situations this is probably where we learn something where we get better and like where also we can help others with after well, as humans whether we're it's our personal life our private life it's our our business or it's our our passion like volleyball right slash career this is what they call in the lean startup a pivot or persevere moment and i think that this is really important to remember that there's not always just going attack mode trying to get to where you want to be sometimes you do need to pivot a little bit change direction and go maybe towards the same goal but at in a different way right so just remember that when you do accept those feelings and all of those things that Barrett was saying which i love that you consider this is this a moment where i should pivot or i should per i should persevere perseverance in that um mental having to deal with frustration is uh really preparing you for the game too because you will have those situations on the court and all of our mental i mean we all know as athletes the majority i i think the majority of sport is mental <laughs> the physical at our level many people have it but the ones that excel is are the ones that have somehow some way through life really mastered the mental whether intentionally or just by life that's their net that's how they are that's what they've become they've they've gotten that out through life and a lot of frustration people that have dealt with frustration and learned how to um either pivot or persevere learned how to deal with that um are able to do that on the court sleeper. Um, I'm one of those people that need 10 hours plus like an hour nap uh, when I was playing full time. And I would wake up, I mean, I had my clothes ready to go for practice because I needed to put on those clothes and get to morning practice or I wasn't going to make it. Um, my morning routine is take a deep breath. Um, think about one thing I'm grateful for. And then put my feet on the ground. And as Brett was talking about, of like feeling yourself, like I just try to get grounded. Sometimes it's literally 10 seconds, sometimes it's a minute. Um, but my morning routine had to be fast because that's me. I would try to wake up early and give myself an hour and that just was unrealistic for me. Um, I did my meditation in the evening.